The mysterious Mrs Muir. So who is she? Because she's not even got a name. How don't we have the history? Why don't we know anything about her? Mrs Muir was kind of a big deal in Nepal. She was among a group of pioneering women that set up Nepal New Zealand in 1924 and went on to lead the organisation for nearly two decades. She also coached the first Silver Ferns team in their historic 1938 tour to Australia. Yet Nepal historians didn't even know her first name. Hi, I've just, I've just picked up out of the Evening Post 1937 the Kiwi Trophy, which was presented by Myrtle Muir, is, is that still in existence? Because it's, um, it's rather amazing, and I know that there's an image of this in uh, one of the early newsreels. So um, I think it's the 19, actually I think it's the 1947 newsreel when it was being presented. So I was up at Nepal New Zealand the uh, the talking to them one day, and there's the past president's photos on the wall, and there was always this one enigmatic one, Mrs H.D. Muir, and I can remember thinking to myself how sad, you know, that you just get remembered as H.D. Muir, and I bet it's her husband's initials. And you know, so who is she? Because she's not even got a name. She's carrying someone else's name. So we're thinking, who is this Mrs Muir? And then we thought we don't really know much about her at all, and it actually took a wee while to just find out what her first name was. So, and, and she was Myrtle. So she was Myrtle Muir. And then uh, we thought, well, thinking of the centenary coming up in 2024, that we need to uh, know who these, these women were, really were, and try and sort of flesh it out a bit more because they are the women who uh, brought netball to the fore, made it a national game, believed in it, fought for it, and they did it all on their own. So you were the one that, the online sleuth that kind of figured out her maiden name. Yeah, so the history that I, uh, background that I, I've been looking for a while on birth, deaths and marriages and um, sort of did a little bit of backtracking obviously based on her husband's name to find out a marriage certificate. So once I found out when they got married, I obviously then on the marriage certificate had her maiden name. So then could go back to the sort of timing of when she would have been born and worked out, you know, got her birth certificate. So I have birth marriage and death certificate as well. So that sort of pieced a few of the bits of the puzzle together that we didn't have previously, yeah. Um, you can see Mrs Muir here. So as part of the official parade, um, various hats and different outfits that they used to wear and quite stylish actually for the time. You look at them and you think it's, yeah, it's quite amazing the things that they wore. Another one. Yeah, <laughs> so it looks like a outfit. fox or something around <laughs> her neck there. Something amazing. And was there a flurry of excited texts going back and forth when you finally found out her maiden name? Yeah, I think between Margaret and I, we're you know <laughs> really passionate about trying to track down the origins and history of the sport, and um, you know what other people might think we're crazy for getting excited about it is actually a really important part of our history. The documents revealed Mrs. Muir was born Myrtle CQ. Finally, the researchers had a thread they could pull at. A thread that would lead them to one of the most remarkable discoveries in New Zealand sports history. I wasn't sure if it was Segway or CQ. And uh, so you did a bit of a Google and it went you know, European name, I figured, maybe Euro European migrants, and it said Belgium. So I thought, so I was working on European. And then uh, she had a, a cluster of names and she, so she was um, Myrtle um, Violet Matilda. And then I started tracking back through uh, and going into papers past, and I found another CQ, and then I saw that they had married an Edward Mong, M-O-N-G, and I thought, that's Chinese name. And then I thought, CQ, that must be, that must be an anglicising of a Chinese name. So once I put that together, and the penny dropped and I thought, 
Well, maybe she's, she's Goldfields Chinese. She's coming through from Central Otago, Goldfields Chinese. So I started tracking back and then the whole um, CQ family started opening up. I thought how, how extraordinary that she would be one of our first Chinese or you know, Eurasian um, administrators who came, uh, who came through. For me it was, we've never had an Asian silver fern, so you know, to have our first ever coach that has heritage uh, as an Asian was pretty remarkable and something that you know, we just didn't know previously.